So I was asked to make a short video on how to use the control pad and basically enable the analog features on it. So I thought I would just make a quick video on how to do that. So the first thing that you want to do is uh, make sure that you turn on the aimpad functionality. So by default, when you just plug in the device, it looks like this, and um, it doesn't have the analog feature enabled by default. If you hold these three buttons in, it's the middle row the t and the uh, first, second, and third key in that row and hold it down, what will happen is the device will like power off and then power back on again. And if you go into the device manager, you'll see that an Xbox 360 controller has shown up in Windows. So now this device acts as multiple devices. It acts as an Xbox controller, a keyboard, and a mouse. Um, so once that's enabled, you then need to do a calibration process. So the calibration process is done by holding these three keys down and hold them down for a few seconds. You'll see that the lights will turn blue and then they will turn red. That means that all these keys need to be calibrated and you can do it a few different ways. So one, you, you basically just need to hold down the key. Um, when it turns green, that means that key is calibrated, but you can t basically just like hold down all the keys like this and let go of it. And some of them may not still not be fully calibrated, but your goal is just to get them all turn green. And once they do, it'll return back to the original lighting. That means that this is fully calibrated and ready to go. Uh, the next thing you need to do is go into the Cooler Master software and by default, uh, if you go to the key mapping, it's just laid up by a, a normal keypad with just keys. So in order to apply an analog function, there's a, a preset mode under here and under gaming and FPS mode. When you select that, it will have the WASD keys that will essentially turn into the left analog stick. So you'll have analog movement there and you click apply. The next thing that you wanna do is you wanna go into like our controller tester program to validate that it's working as expected. And if you push the, the keys in and see that uh, it's moving, that's a, a good sign that you're, you're getting some, some good analog movement in it, and it's probably in pretty good shape. However, there's one problem here. So you see right here that it shows that the uh, control pad is detected as player number three. What you want it to be is player number one. So this indicates a problem that you're going to get in certain games like for Fortnite, for example, that if it's in player three slot, it's not going to work because it only works when it's in player number one. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this to fix the problem. Usually what you can do is you can hold down these three keys and that will disconnect the Xbox controller from the system. You'll see in here that the Xbox controller no longer is attached to the system, so it's the equivalent of basically unplugging the Xbox controller. And then what we're going to do is basically plug it back in. So I'll push the, the, the three keys in again, hold them down, it turns off, it turns itself back on again, and it's still player three. So that's a problem, right? How do you fix this? So one easy way to fix that is typically it just validate and verify that there's no other Xbox controller plugged in. Um, and when you do that, you want to make sure you just shut down the computer completely and power it back on again. And in most cases, that will fix it. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so after rebooting the computer, you can see now that I have in player slot number one, it's activated here. And when I move those uh, keys around, you'll see I have nice analog control. And uh, I, basically, for all intents and purposes, will work in, in any game that supports an Xbox controller and is expecting player number one slot to be active. Uh, now, something you may not notice and, and something I would recommend uh, doing to get the best analog performance. Uh, so if I hold down the key a little bit, you'll see there's actually some noise here that it's, it's kind of fluctuating around as it's moving around. And uh, a purist as myself is, I prefer to have precise analog control. And the best way to accomplish that is in the Master uh, Plus software. If you go to the lighting tab and then uh, change it to turn off and turn off the uh, LEDs and hit apply, uh, what you'll notice is that it's a much smoother uh, experience and you'll see that there's still just a small slight little twitching here and maybe that's good enough for you and just having these uh, profile keys at the top might be okay. But if you wanna go to the extra level and just completely disable any type of lighting uh, you'll get the best performance. So you have to do this by going to the profile tab and then selecting each of these keys and you're basically just gonna set them all to zero. Oops, we're gonna go zero, zero, zero. And then we hit apply. And when I go back into the here, you'll see if I hold the key down, it will have far less of a twitching movement and you can see it's staying rock solid at 0 0.220. So it's a much better analog experience and much more what you would expect. The downside is you don't have the RGB lighting, but it's not that big of a deal. If the lighting is the huge thing for you, then just switch to another profile and 
show off your lighting effects with you know the, your different rainbow waves and tornadoes and whatever it is that you want to, to show off um, but when you're actually serious about gaming and you want the, the best control you'll go ahead and, and just go back to that profile one or whatever profile you have set up for and return to your, your analog movement because who really needs rgb lighting in order to effectively play a game but there you have it that is the overview on how to set up control pad for a first person shooter having the best experience possible